Coming up on today's Lockdown Maps, let's talk some Kemba Walker, Luka Doncic, and some Josh Green. Where would you take Josh Green in a redraft right now? Yeah, we're going to redraft a little bit of the 2020 draft. Coming up on today's Locked On Mavs. Doncic, and this is Locked On Mavs. don't believe you shouldn't be here welcome to locked on maps this is one of your co-hosts isaac harris half of the show contributor to maps.com and to the corner three in studio 41 for the maps and uh today riding solo but unexpectedly riding solo this pod i'm just gonna be honest with you it could go so many different directions because I was not supposed to be solo tonight. Nick is on a lockdown retreat over in Utah with David Locke and I don't know, and the locked on golden children of David's. And if there's one place in the state of Utah that, I, that should have good equipment to record a podcast, it's the freaking locked on retreat center, whatever it is. And, uh, we tried, it was tough and uh you getting me solo so i literally ended the call and just hit record and i'm like i'm just gonna roll with this and wing it so we could by the third segment we could just be sitting back vibing talking about who knows what so uh and you know what nobody in lockdown is gonna listen to it because they're all on a retreat so let's just go uh let's just have fun today um if you're listening on youtube I don't even know what what type of question. Uh, let's do this on YouTube. What give me? Um, I, I want to say something about Kimba in the comments. Actually, let's do this. Josh Green. No, this is already off the rails. Here's the question because this is going to be a question I want to talk about in a little bit. What's the biggest mistake the Mavs have made over the past twelve months? There you go. The biggest mistake. We're going to rank some of them. Um, I'll throw out some questions or some, some options for you. Um, the uncertainty of the Christian Wood situation, letting Jalen Brunson go, not getting a third ball handler, the JaVel McGee signing, insert something else that you don't, that I did not list. There are some options. Put that in the YouTube comment below. Um, let's hang out. All right, let's do this. Let's do, um, full transparency. I wrote down some questions. Uh, that was going to ask Nick. And uh, so you know how this is going to turn out if I plan to ask someone else that was going to be on the show. Um, but let's have fun with it. Kemba Walker. Mavs, if you were living under a rock uh, and you don't know this, but the Mavs signed Kemba Walker the other day. He's going to wear number 34 for the Mavs. Um, he obviously didn't suit up the other night because they could have used him as they couldn't get the ball to the floor after Dinwiddie got wrongfully ejected from the game. It was so dumb. And, uh, but Kimba was there wearing a hoodie, chilling. He talked to, uh, I think, a um, TNT sideline crew during the game, talked about how uh, good he's feeling, how it's some of the best he's felt, that he's happy the Mavs took a you know, chance on him, brought him in, uh, that he's going to give the Mavs some ball handling, but also a, a veteran locker room presence. Um, sign me up for all, I mean, all saying all the right things, right? Um, we talked about Kimba a few, a few pods ago, just some, uh, general expectation and general thoughts on the signing of probably, you know, better than Faku, but you know, I'm not sitting here thinking that he's going to challenge for six man of the year and, you know, it's going to take the Mavs to the finals. Um, worried about some knee stuff with him looked kind of rough in New York. Uh, then they shut it down and uh, he's been a free agent and nobody's picked him up. And you, a guy that a lot of people like around the league. And if he's not on a roster, it's a little, little alarming uh, for uh, some other good teams in the league looking for a backup point guard. But here we are. This is what Dallas shows to do. And uh, what, what's a realistic expectation for him? I think naturally, when you look at other, I try to look up, I was like, all right, who are some similar guards in the league right now? Over 30 playing a backup role. And I'm like, what, like, could he be, 
you know, Mike Conley was starting some games, but it's like, all right, Mike Conley's better than him right now. So I just reminder, the general guideline here was players backup point guards over the age of 30. I hate to bring up his name, but the further we get away from this, the, the more weird that the situation looks from the outside, the fact that Dragic didn't end up in Dallas of the fact that I I'm so curious of what, like what's the future story that comes out? I feel like there's some type of story that comes out with some source information, but it's an anonymous source of Dallas was close to the reason why Dragic didn't go to Dallas was Dallas was close to a, a trade to bring in another guard and it fell through and Dragic, you know, went to play with Chicago and all of that. Um, does that story come out at some point? Because at this point, it still doesn't. They're looking for ball handlers. Like they legitimately could not get the ball over the floor the other night when Dinwiddie, you know, is ejected from the game. Luke is still resting. They run Josh at point. They bring Bertons in uh, instead of another player, which that wasn't any diss towards Bertons. Some people reached out to us like, why are y'all hating on Bertons? Wasn't hating on Bertons in it. It's just in the scenario, instead of, bringing in Bertons, I thought they would have brought in Frank or somebody that could handle the ball. That's the only thing. Bertons hit a couple threes in the game. He's actually playing decent basketball right now. So I'm happy for him. Um, but for, but for uh, Kimba, it's like they had Faku. Now they brought in Kimba. They obviously have some type of need for a backup ball handler spot. You know, Dragic is averaging, what, 17, 18 minutes a game uh, in Chicago, around eight, eight points a game. He's shooting 43% from three. We know his relationship with Luca. I mean, he would have just fit perfect with this team. I mean, there's a clear cut role. Um, so once again, I think the further we get away from what you know him not ending up in Dallas, I think the weirder it kind of gets. Um, but Kimba's the next guy, and it's like, all right, can he give Dallas what Dragic is giving Chicago? Like what what I just listed off. Dragic playing around 18 minutes a game. It's like, could I don't think Kimba's going to play, play around 18 minutes a game, but could he do like 15 minutes a game? Could he relieve the ball handling duties from, you know, Dinwiddie when Luca's off the floor, whatever it is. So um, I don't know. I feel like even Dragic is a step up from what we should expect. You look at a guy like John Wall that's playing uh, in LA right now with the Clippers. And it's like, all right, he didn't play for a long time. He's 32 around the same age as Kemba. Um, he's coming off the bench. He hasn't started a single game for the Clippers this year. Uh, but he's played 22 minutes a game, averaging 12 points a game. I, I think that's more, that's way more to expect than what we should expect from Kimba in this role. So then I look at a guy like Patty Mills, and Patty Mills isn't having the best of seasons in Brooklyn. And I'm like, is that? I mean, he's averaging like four points a game. He's coming off the bench, you know, for the Nets. Is that like a realistic guy? a realistic veteran point guard presence, but also, you know, has some type of role can shoot off the, uh, and, and catch a shoot situations. It, could he be a Patty Mills type for Dallas? This uh, 2022 Patty Mills. That's what I'm like. Is that realistic? I don't know, but it's hard. It's hard when you look across the league and I don't know if this is a telling in itself. There's not a lot of teams that, employ the veteran backup point guard to be like their their third point because a lot of these teams are going with younger options um we've even talked about other vets that you know a lot of us have known for a long time not just point guards but other bigs that are just not in the league anymore lamarcus aldridge just not in the league anymore paul Millsop just not in the league just they're just done because they've just gotten older and teams are choosing now to use those last roster spots a lot of teams are to just take flyers on younger guys. And I think it's a cool strategy to have. All right, let's take a quick break and then we'll be right back. Uh, talk about some Josh Green because I want to look back at the 2020 draft, believe it or not. This podcast today is brought to you by Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Let's look up a little uh, odds real quick on Bet Online for the Mavs Pistons game. Thursday night, six o'clock, six ten Central Time. Um, Mavs at Detroit. Dang, I can't even ask Nick what what the what he guess what he would guess. Uh, minus seven and a half Dallas in that game. Favor the favorite. Uh, obviously, the Pistons don't have Cade Cunningham, so it's a pretty good number. 
there. They should go in there and take care of business, but you know what? Teams who don't have their stars, that is not a guaranteed for Dallas. Get the latest odds and trends for your ever professional and amateur league out there. And if you love sports podcasts, you can find those on Bet Online as well. Always the fastest, easiest way to get your betting fix. Head to website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet Online, where the game starts. Cool. I have no cool transition music. But let's talk about the 2020 NBA draft. Reminder this NBA draft took place in November. It was one of the weirder drafts we've ever seen uh, in 2020 as the season, you know, was obviously what a year um, in general. But when you look at the NBA that year with the league shutting down, how it shut down, then, you know, obviously the bubble. But then they had this draft right after that in the month of November. And, you know, uh, Josh Green was asked this great question the other night uh, from Valencia, uh, who covers the Mavs, does a great job covering the Mavs. And she asked him about like what he would tell like younger players. And Josh gave this great answer about um, just like sticking with it basically because, and he, he kind of uh, opened up a little bit about his journey in NBA so far and how it's been completely different than what he's ever imagined with COVID and not being able to be on family and friends and everything with it. Stuff that we've all talked about as fans and media about how the beginning of Josh, Josh Green's career has been so weird, but to hear him talk about it and admit it too, of like, man, this has just been unlike I've, anything I've ever seen. And um, just the effect it had on him. But you look back at this draft and there's, uh, man, it's a polarizing draft for the Mavs. The Bob Volgaris stuff, the Donnie Nelson stuff, the story coming out about who who left the draft room, who made the draft pick. Um, I was texting with somebody in the draft room that night about how different things were happening, and um, they didn't go with Sadiq Bay, and there was some they liked Sadiq Bay, or at least a portion of the room did. And um, yeah, Josh Green was the pick. And then they end up with Tyrell Terry that end up with Tyler Bay and all of that. It was a fun draft class to cover a little bit at the beginning. I got the chance to write on, do some feature stories and talk on the phone with Ty Terry and Tyler Bay and uh, just super nice guys. I literally, I wish them the best, but um, they end up with Josh Green. Josh Green was a ball Garris guy for sure. And um, you know, the whole Rick experience early on, it was tough, all of that. And now look at his, I'm just skimming through the Josh career. We could do a whole pod on his career, his first three years in the league, but look at where he's at now. He's having arguably a career year. He's, he's playing a great basketball. He's so, so confident. He's shooting the three ball better than he ever has before. So let's do the classic redraft where, how high would Josh green go now in a redraft? Would he change at all? Because at, at one point, if you asked me last year, there are some definitely some names that I would say, yep, take them over him. And now there's a few names that I'd say no. And now I don't think he's jumping up into the top 10, but could he stay as a top 20 pick instead of going down? I think he could. Let's look at some names in the draft. This is a draft that featured Anthony Edwards at the top. Then Wiseman, Lamella Ball, Pat Williams, Isaac Okoro. Those are the top five picks in that draft, just as a reminder. So I'm going to list, list off some names that I think are for sure over Josh Green right now if you did a redraft. Anthony Edwards, LaMelo Ball, Patrick Williams, Kongwu, Vassell, Halliburton, uh, Cole Anthony, Sadiq Bay, Precious, Tyrese Maxey, Desmond Bain, if y'all have ever heard of him before, he played down the street. Emmanuel Quickly, do you still take him over Josh Green right now? I feel like Emmanuel quickly has more trade value around the league than Josh Green. So if you add up those guys, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. That's 12 right there. Now, some of you are even, some of you are probably screaming at me right now saying, why would you, you wouldn't take Josh Green over one of those players? Or there's some other names that I didn't list. And so you tell me, even though you can't talk to me back on a podcast, this is fun, riveting content right here. <clears throat> these are some names that I'm saying, you know what? It's not a lock that you would take them over Josh Green. I could look really stupid on this, but don't care. James Wiseman, Ducks. Um, Isaac Okoro, Killian Hayes. I should probably put Obi Toppin in the top 
part, shouldn't have. Probably. He's he's better in this group. Uh, Avdia, Jalen Smith, Isaiah Stewart, and Poku. Is it crazy to take to put Josh Green in that same like group? Now, I'm trying to be realistic too, in the sense of because you're I mean, you're listening to the the guy who is constantly saying, let's just keep the expectations lowered. That's what I was saying with Christian Wood when he came in uh, to Dallas because they bought low and it's the whole like test out the experience of hey, is this going to work in Dallas and all that stuff? And then people got really mad, act like I hated Christian Wood because I was like, hey, let's just manage, let's hold up on the expectations of Christian Wood uh, before we anoint him as, you know, Scottie Pippen to uh, Luka Doncic. And so I'm trying to do that with Josh here, but I think it's a testament to the leap that he's made that if you took Josh Green over James Wiseman right now in a redraft, I'm not arguing it. Like J- J- James Wiseman's in the, in the G League and not doing well at all, and it's like you factor in Josh Green being a wing, a defending wing who's shooting the basketball well. Like a lot of teams like those type of guys. And anyway, somebody's gonna clip this, and James Wiseman's gonna be like incredible in three months, and I'm just gonna look so stupid. But oh well, here we are. This is podcasting and content. I should have never went live just on the fly. Um, where would you take him? Is he is he in the top 20? Is he a 13 to 15th pick in this draft? Does he move up a little bit? You taking him over Poku long term right now? Poku or Josh Green? I think I'm taking Josh Green. And it's just crazy because I think over time, like you asked me this once again a year ago, I don't think I'm taking Josh Green. I think I'm taking some of these other guys um, that I listed. So I'm happy for him. And uh Man, I hope he just finishes out the rest of this year strong and continue to build on his career. Um, let's ask another question to myself because, you know, just over here talking to myself in my house. Fun stuff. If the shooters shoot better, would we even care about the other stuff right now? So, like, think about it this way. Think of all the storylines that's happening with Dallas right now that I'm about to talk about in the third segment. The whole Christian Wood extravaganza. I don't even know what to talk about. <clears throat> um, the third ball handler stuff. The not signing Dragic. The now talking more about losing Jalen Brunson. The Jason Kidd year two um, rotations. All this. If the shooters were just were hitting open shots like they were last year and shooting, especially in the playoffs, shooting at a high clip. Let's say Dorian, Reggie, Maxi, all shooting over forty percent from three. How many more wins do they have? And therefore, how much are we talking and freaking out about all the other stuff? Because something tells me that if they were hitting their shots and the Mavs had a few more wins under their under their belt and little few less losses that naturally i don't feel like it would be as big of a deal we wouldn't be talking about as much some of the rotating like we would still be talking about it i think there would still be a, a good portion of people that's like <clears throat> can we get christian with luca more i mean i know we're winning games i know we're like top four top five in the west but like can we still like it's a bad to ask for it wouldn't be as freak out mode it's just something to think about of dang like how big of an impact just those guys not making their shots right now is having just on everything that we look at, you know, we're trying to figure out what's the biggest reason. I think if you talk to 10 different, you know, Mavs fans right now, they'd give you a different reason of why we're struggling from all the reasons I listed below, but let's take a quick break and then we'll come back and talk about some of those mistakes. (sighs) All right, back. Let's do it. Rank these mistakes. <clears throat> this is the YouTube question. If you're watching on YouTube, you've already listed this probably. But rank these mistakes from the Mavs. The JaVale, JaVale McGee signing. The, the weird Christian Wood situation. Let's just say that. Um, some would say the mishandling of the Christian Wood situation. I, however you want to word it, you know what I'm talking about. Letting Jalen Brunson go in not finding, not trading for or signing, however you want to say, a, a third ball handler. So let's just rank those four. <clears throat> I think for me, number four on that list, 
I think number four on that list would be the Christian Wood situation. And I'm saying I think that's the least of the mistakes. And just because you didn't pay a high price to go get him. Like it's if you went out and made the Christoph Porzingis trade and you gave up multiple firsts, you gave up a young flyer and Dennis Smith Jr., some expiring contracts. If one of your big swings with Luka Doncic on the roster was Christian Wood, and then you're in this situation you are now of just kind of the back and forth stuff, and he's obviously wanting to start just this whole thing um, that people are talking about, just this whole thing. I think it would be so much different. It's like, okay, that's really like they got to figure this crap out. But since it was such a low price, it, it just it's not it's not high up my list. I think these other things are bigger mistakes from the Mavs. I would put the JaVel McGee signing over that at number three. <clears throat> not the end of the world um, because it is you know it's five million dollars that those small contracts do add up. Um, especially for a guy that's not going to be playing the games. I mean, he got a DMP CD the other night. Um, you signed him to be your starting center. You promised him that he would be a starting center. You gave him a three-year deal, and now we're 20 games in the season, and he's getting DMP CDs. That's a mistake. They misread that. Next one uh, goes with the Brunson one, but not finding a third ball handler is number two for me as far as the biggest mistakes. I thought that I've been vocal about this. I thought they would already done it by now. I thought they would have already made the trade. They would have figured it out. They would have had a defined number three or a number two. And then is the number three ball handler on the team because of how well it worked for Dallas post trade line deadline last year. I was shocked that they didn't go back to that. And, um, it just surprised me some. And I think that has been a mistake. I think it, not having another guy who can create, not having another guy who can handle the ball. I mean, <clears throat> they ran Josh Green at point guard and post game. He said, man, I I just don't ever run, you know, <laughs> off screens on ball. I only go off screens off ball. And that was the, that was the, the third point guard, on, you know, on the floor. That was the main point guard on the floor at the time so i think that's a mistake and i think the biggest mistake still going back to it is letting Jalen brunson go i was um i was very vocal of the moment you went past the trade deadline and you kept Jalen brunson you had to keep him and you had to keep you had to pay the price over the offseason and they didn't they let him go and i, I think it's a hole in the roster i think um he would have been playing good basketball with the Mavs and Luca uh, and them right now. And um, yeah, that's something I, I think it's one of the what ifs that we'll continue to look back on. You know, I, I don't think Jalen Brunson is going to turn into a Donovan Mitchell or anything like that, but you can't help to think if they had Jalen Brunson still on this team and Denwitty's coming off the bench and um, you know, you're adding Christian Wood to a, to a team to the same roster you are let's joke about the tim hardaway free agent stuff but you really are adding christian wood and tim hardaway to a western conference finals team you know this team we talked about a lot hey they went to the western conference finals last year well they had Jalen brunson that was the second best player last year and they and these so it's not really the same team who went to the conference finals so anyway <clears throat> we like to talk about the you know, online communities like to talk about the mistakes. There you go. Um, that's how I'd rank them. Um, let me ask this last question, then we'll hop off here, get ready for this Pistons game uh, tomorrow at 6 o'clock Central Time. Now that we've seen this team play, you know, 20 games, I think we're at 20 games right now, 10 and 10. Um, now that we've seen this team play for 20 games, is the only – Let's just uh, let's assume that we keep basically the same roster. How confident are you in the rest of uh, the non Luka Mavs? Is the only way that this Mavericks team finishes in the top six of the Western Conference is if Luka puts up astronomical numbers and he's the clear cut MVP? Is that the only way at this point? Because I think before the season, there were definitely ways, and I mean, I was I, I was confident that they'd be a top six team, and that was with me. I still predicted Luca to be the MVP, but I didn't. I still thought, okay, we're gonna have a lot of these other things too. 
that they were going to trade for a third ball handler, that Javel was going to be an upgrade over Dwight Powell, that Spencer was going to have a breakout year, that these guys were going to keep on shooting the ball at a high clip. A lot of these things aren't happening. And so now you ask, now you ask yourself the question is the only way with this current roster is for Luca to be in an ungodly territory is the only way for them to beat the Warriors like they did the other night is for Luca to have a 40 point triple double. That's the question right now. Or are you confident that some of these other things will not regress? What's the other, what's the other word for it? Um, go back to normal. I don't really know. That's, that's so bad phrasing. Um, what, what are you confident the most in? Are you confident that Javel looks like a serviceable player and like an upgrade over Dwight? Eh, I don't know. Are you confident in the guys shooting the ball better? Yeah, I, I think that's the one I'm most confident about. Are you confident that Maverick's trade for another ball handler creator? Yeah, I think at some point I want to think so, but I was wrong. I, I thought it'd be in the off season, um, you know, before the season started. So I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question. Um, I want to say yes, just because of how wide open the West is. And there's some unexpected teams playing really good basketball, like the Sacramento Kings and stuff that I want to say, yeah, if you want to avoid the play in as currently constructed and as they're playing right now, it's going to take an unbelievable, unreal, ungodly astronomical season from Luka Doncic uh, and for him to like run away at the MVP for them to finish top six. But hopefully it doesn't require that. All right, that's enough. I'm hopping off here. <clears throat> Nick, enjoy your trip in Utah with all the cool locked on people. And uh, yeah, Mavs play tonight in Detroit. No Kate, Cade Cunningham uh, for the Pistons. Hopefully it's a, another game for Dallas to get under the belts. Get a win. Let's do this. Let's get a couple wins uh, before they head up to New York for that very early tip game on Saturday. You guys have been good. Be safe. And I'll holla at you tomorrow after the Pistons game. Peace out. Boom.